want to buy a dodgy video? I ask because as a man in his late 40s, I have a great affection for some of the dodgiest videos the UK ever saw. The videos that were known collectively in the early 80s as the video nasties. Here's what happened. In the early 80s when the video industry took off, there was a sudden plethora of unregulated videotapes that allowed horror fans like me to see for the first time what unregulated, uncensored international horror looked like. Titles like I Spit on Your Grave, Cannibal Holocaust, Driller Killer. These titles were suddenly available for the first time to British horror fans like me. Now very quickly, legislation was brought in to outlaw them. Very usefully, the Director of Public Prosecutions drew up a list of all the most potentially depraving and corrupting titles so the police could bust them which was very useful for us horror fans because it gave us a checklist of films that we needed to have seen in order to be thoroughly depraved and corrupted, and we all enjoyed ourselves doing so. Now, I mention this because there's a new documentary that's just become available this week by Jake West called Video Nasties, Moral Panics, Censorship and Videotape, and it's a documentary about how the whole Video Nasties panic happened and how the legislation was brought in on the back of it. And I'd like to commend it to you for the following reason. It doesn't matter whether or not you're a fan of the video Nazis. It doesn't matter whether you like those horror films. It doesn't matter whether you have a strange nostalgic affection for grubby VHS tapes, which are made to look even worse by the fact that they're secondhand and chewed up and degraded and therefore look all the more sinister. What matters is that the legislation that was brought in to outlaw the video Nazis was brought in basically under false pretenses. And the thing that the documentary makes very clear is that what happened in the past can happen again in the future. Now, I know I'm a horror film fan. I know that when I talk about video nasties, I'm looking at them through rose-tinted glasses because I remember growing up with those films. But in this documentary, we have voices such as Kim Newman, the great horror fan who feels very affectionately about titles like Last House and Left, to Graham Bright, the man who got the legislation put through that eventually gave us the Video Recordings Act. I believe that uh, research is taking place and it will show that these films not only affect young people, but I believe they affect adults as well. But the most important voice of the film is that of an academic, a man called Martin Barker. And what Martin Barker says is this. The legislation that was brought in to outlaw the video Nazis was basically brought in on false pretenses, based on evidence that was fallacious and rushed through by people who hadn't seen the films and didn't know what they were talking about. And what he says is this. Those people don't want you to know the history of the Video Recordings Act because when they try and do the same thing again, they don't want you to see it coming. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to check out Jake West's documentary about the video nasties, whether or not you care about Cannibal Holocaust, not because of what it says about the films, but because what it tells us about the way in which censorship is pushed through unfairly and how we need to know about the past to prevent that happening again in the future. A report was published under the title Video Violence and Children from a group that called itself the Parliamentary Group Video Inquiry. Now that title is important. They were absolutely not a parliamentary group. They did have one or two MPs, Tim Sainsbury were for example. They did have a couple of Lords, but they had no official status at all. However, calling themselves that and indeed holding their meetings on parliamentary premises on a number of occasions meant that they came with the imprimatur of being a parliamentary body.